There is a lot to say about Godot's UI system. Beyond the base notes we saw in the last video, there is something called containers. Containers allow you to do something like that, to force the UI to follow a certain arrangement. If we head to the UI scene, you will see that the hierarchy got a bit more complex compared to the previous video. The various labels and texture frames and all those UI nodes are contained as children of container nodes. All default container nodes have the container keyword inside of them. For example, we have the margin container that contains everything else inside of it. The margin container forces the UI to respect some margin, be it on the left and right sides, like it's the case here, but you can also add some on the top and bottom side with the custom margin constant. Now I can stretch the UI or squash it down. The margin of 32 pixels will, will always be respected. Next up, we have a vertical box container. That's what's forcing all the content of the UI to align into three rows because we have three containers inside of that vertical container. If I were to remove one or to hide it, you would see the children rearrange instantly. And that's the strength of containers. They rearrange the UI automatically as long as your UI is set up properly. To add one, you add a node like normal and you'll search for container. The container node doesn't do much. It's the base class you'll use to create your own containers. It features a signal to tell you when you have to sort its children. But then all of the children of that node are specific containers that will affect what's inside of them. For example, the H split and vertical split will split the UI in two, horizontally or vertically. The margin container adds a margin. The grid container creates a grid and you can use it for an inventory system. You have a tab container to create, as you might guess, tabs. But to me, the most useful ones are the box containers, vertical and horizontal mostly. They create rows and columns. But the one you'll probably use the most is the margin container as it allows you to put a very specific margin on any side of your UI and maybe the center container to center something on screen from time to time. Let us rebuild the UI from scratch. I've shuffled everything around and you'll find this scene on GitHub. Now, the most important aspect of containers is that they arrange your UI automatically. So you don't want to place elements by hand. You will let the containers do that work. You still have to set up the UI nodes for them to work properly. There's a lot to say about that and it's beyond the scope of the video. But for instance, the anchor is quite important. This tells Godot how it will calculate the margins down there and how it will place the element on screen. And then you have the size flags. A node set to expand on a given axis will try to take as much space as possible inside the container. For example, if all three try to expand, they will all try to take one third of a horizontal box container. Only one is set to expand and you have two other nodes. The two nodes will have their minimum size and the third one will take all the remaining space. So when we rebuild the UI, we know we want three rows and we want them to be spaced evenly in one column and we want some margin around that. I like to build the UI from the bottom up to think about the smallest components. To get us started, there's this row, then there'll be the second one and then to go up and build the top level UI, at least when I have all the components like that. We'll start with the bottom row. We'll use a horizontal box container and we'll place the nodes inside of it. You just have to drag and drop them. Automatically, you can see how the container arranges the node. Now it will place them in the top left corner because that's where it's anchored. It's anchored to the game's origin. We can move the container around and work on the next bit. We need a second row here, so I'll add a new horizontal box container and place the button group, the label, the texture frame and the nine patch frame inside of it. 
Now we also want the texture frame to be a child v9 patch frame because we're going to center it on it. You can see by default it doesn't center at all so we'll want to add a center container. We'll place the center container inside the 9 patch frame and the texture frame inside of it as a child. So you can see some weird things happening and that's because currently we don't have a big container to tell our UI to take as much space as possible. So we still have to do that. We want to add our vertical box container to arrange all three rows that we have into a vertical layout. And you can see already it works a tiny bit better. We also want some margin on the sides, on the left and the right side. So at the top of our UI, we want to add a margin container. Let's drag the vertical box container inside of it. And you can see it added a tiny bit of margin. By default, the margin is set to 8 pixels. We'll want to add a custom constant margin on the right and the left side. Let's say 32 by 32. And now we'll change the margin container size to fit the entire screen. By default, all the containers and UI nodes are anchored to the game world's origin. We don't want that. We want to set the anchor of this node to use the full rectangle. In other words, it's going to anchor the top left corner on the origin of the game world and the bottom right corner on the bottom right side, the limits of the screen. Changing the anchor doesn't change anything visually speaking, but if we go down to the margin, it does change the values. Now the right and the bottom side of our margin container are relative to the bottom right corner of the window. So we can set them back to zero. The way the values are right now mean that the top edge is against the top of the game window, the left edge is going to be next to the top of the left side of the window and the bottom and right edges are anchored to the right and bottom side of the game window. When you set the anchor to use the full rectangle, the anchor property of the control node will be set as such. The left and top will be set to begin and the right and bottom will be set to the end of the screen. And already just with that change, you can see how well our UI works. If we want to change the position of a row inside the UI, we can just move it down the hierarchy and Godot will automatically update it. We have one little problem left with our center container. As you can see, it's not using the entire nine patch frame as a reference. So we'll want to anchor it to the full rectangle of its parent and then set the margin back to zero. This shows you that the anchor is relative to the parent's bounding box. My UI node was already set to use the entire window to use as much space as it can. So the margin container, when we set it to anchor to the full rectangle, to the full bounding box of the UI node, it's anchoring to the full game window. When we go down to the center container inside the nine patch frame, it becomes relative to the parent, which has a limited size. Now, if we resize the parent, you will see that the center container works as expected. Always keep in mind, though, that because we are using horizontal box containers, when we update the UI, for example, if I were to modify the 9 patch frame and update the UI, it will rescale. The containers always arrange their children automatically. So if you want to modify the size of the 9 patch frame, you will have to modify its values instead. And in particular, its size flags. It's set to expand automatically and you don't want that. You will want to set it to only fill the available space and then give it a minimum size of the value you want. 200 pixels, for example. And going back to the main game scene, note that you always want the UI to be a child of a control node because these are the only ones that have anchors and margins to use as a reference for the UI. And next up, you don't want them to be a child of a node 2D. Otherwise, they'll try to use the node 2D as a reference and it tends to modify the behavior of the UI. 
That's why my game node, the root of my scene tree, is a simple node and not a node 2D. That way it doesn't affect the UI node in any way.